as NASA increasingly relies on reliable crew access. The recent catastrophic failure at Russia's Soyuz launch pad has once again demonstrated that SpaceX Dragon is currently the only vehicle that can safely and continuously deliver crews to the International Space Station. In today's Tech Map episode, we will analyze why Crew Dragon is becoming the ISS's fire truck, the emergency responder in every crisis. What exactly happened at the Soyuz launch pad and how it's reshaping Russia's access to orbit? And what if SpaceX's Dragon had to do everything Russia spacecraft used to could it keep the ISS alive without Russia? On November 27th, Russia launched a Soyuz spacecraft from a place called Site-31, located at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, to send astronauts to the ISS as usual. The launch worked, and the crew got to the ISS safely. But after the launch, something went wrong. A huge 20-ton platform. Think of it like a big support structure wasn't secured properly and fell into a pit called the Flame Trench by the rocket's thrust. There is significant damage to the pad. This is clearly a strategic loss for Russia. Site 31 at Baikonur is the only Russian pad currently configured to launch the Soyuz rocket and two spacecraft critical to the space station, the cargo-only progress vehicle and the Soyuz crew capsule. The temporary loss of launch capabilities from Pad 31 has raised concerns about the lack of progress launches. According to an internal schedule, there are two progress vehicles due to launch between now and July 2027, followed by the next crewed Soyuz mission next summer. And here's why that's a huge deal. Site-31 is currently the only Russian pad configured to launch the Soyuz rocket, the lifeline, for both the Progress cargo ships and the Soyuz crew capsules that keep the ISS running. With that pad now out of commission, Russia faces a serious bottleneck. According to internal schedules, two Progress missions were supposed to launch before July 2027, with another crewed Soyuz flight planned for next summer. But now everything's on hold. This is more than just a scheduling headache. The Progress spacecraft is the unsung hero of the ISS. It doesn't just haul up food, water, and gear, it's also responsible for reboosting the station's orbit. Over time, the ISS gradually loses altitude because of atmospheric drag, and Progress is what pushes it back up. Yes, American vehicles like Cygnus and Dragon can help with reboost, but here's the kicker. The real concern isn't just altitude, it's attitude control. The ISS stays stable in space thanks to a delicate dance between US gyroscopes and Russian thrusters. But those thrusters rely on fuel that's only delivered by progress. And if there's no progress, the Russian segment runs out of propellant. While it's theoretically possible for U.S. supply ships to bring fuel, there's currently no practical way to transfer it into the Russian propulsion system. So here's where things get really interesting. The temporary loss of Pad 31 doesn't just slow down Russia's space operations, it actually puts more pressure on SpaceX to step in. According to a source familiar with NASA-Russia relations, SpaceX might be called upon to back up Russia during this downtime. Now, SpaceX has already proven that it can help with one of the ISS's biggest needs reboosting its orbit. The company successfully demonstrated this a while ago using a modified cargo dragon with a special trunk section, and the test worked flawlessly. It's a neat, clean solution that doesn't require any complex engineering workarounds like welding extra communication gear onto the station just to make things talk to each other. But that's not the only idea floating around. Some in the space community are suggesting we could bring back something like the ESA's Autonomous Transfer Vehicle, or ATV, if you remember those ATVs used to haul tons, literally, of supplies to the ISS. In fact, each one could carry three times more cargo than a Progress spacecraft and they also had the ability to boost the station's orbit. So in theory, 
an upgraded or next-gen ATV could fill in the gap left by progress. That said, reboosting isn't the real nightmare here Attitude Control is. Cargo Dragon and Cygnus might be great at delivering supplies and pushing the station higher, but they can't refuel the Russian thrusters that help desaturate the station's gyroscopes. However, a proposed technical solution is that if a cargo ship can push the ISS upward by firing its main engines straight through the station's center of mass, COEM, the torque needed to desaturate the gyroscopes could be provided by firing smaller thrusters off to the side instead. Cargo ships like Dragon have clusters of these thrusters placed away from the COEM line, so operators just adjust how long each one fires by changing pulse timing to create the exact twist needed to reset the gyroscopes. Of course, people have also floated the idea of launching progress on a completely different rocket, maybe a Falcon 9. Sounds cool, right? Unfortunately, that's not realistic. Progress depends on a specific kind of hot fire separation during launch, which Falcon is built for. Add in the costs, the logistics of getting a Russian spacecraft ready for launch from US soil, and yeah, not happening anytime soon. Then there's the wildcard question, could Starship eventually boost the ISS? In theory, yes, Starship's engines are more than powerful enough. But in practice, probably not anytime soon. Even one of those engines running at low power could shake the station like a tin can. Plus, Starship hasn't even performed a docking or approach test with the ISS yet, so the risks are off the charts. But what do you think should SpaceX become the go-to backup for ISS stability? Or should NASA and its partners build a new dedicated vehicle for the job? Drop your thoughts down in the comments. I'm really curious where you all stand on this one. So here's the bigger picture. This whole incident doesn't just damage Russia's Soyuz launch pad. It also shines a bright light on something that's been quietly building for years, SpaceX's growing monopoly on crew transportation to the ISS. Right now, SpaceX's Crew Dragon is the only NASA-certified vehicle capable of taking astronauts to the ISS. Boeing's Starliner is still in test mode, it needs to complete one more uncrewed mission before NASA signs off for human flights. That means for the foreseeable future, Dragon is the only ticket to orbit. But that's not all. The dependency runs even deeper. The Cygnus cargo vehicle, which delivers supplies to the ISS, now also relies on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket to reach orbit. Yep, both Dragon and Cygnus are flying on Falcon 9s. At this point, Falcon 9 is the only operational rocket launching both crew and cargo to the station. As Ars Technica's space editor Eric Berger summed it up perfectly, it's crazy to think about it, but if there's any emergency on the ISS at this point, it means all the responsibility falls on SpaceX. Crew Dragon. Goods Dragon with Cygnus. Reboosts Dragon with Cygnus. Quest Explanation Dragon. Basically, SpaceX is holding up the entire operation. Now, there are some big advantages to that. SpaceX has been flying astronauts to the ISS since 2020, and they've proven themselves time and again. If there's an emergency, say, an astronaut gets sick, or there's a critical system failure, SpaceX can scramble a rescue mission faster than anyone else. We saw that last year, when a Crew Dragon was repurposed to bring home Boeing's stranded Starliner astronauts after a technical issue. So reliability check, experience check, speed definitely check. And because Dragon can do pretty much everything, carry people, haul supplies, and even perform reboosts to nudge the ISS into a higher orbit, NASA's got an all-in-one solution. Normally, Russia's Soyuz and Progress handle those jobs, but with their pad out of commission, SpaceX is doing it all. It's like having one incredibly reliable friend who handles all your chores, cooking, driving, cleaning while everyone else is out sick. Another plus cost. SpaceX's reusable technology means they can fly cheaper than traditional programs. NASA doesn't have to pay multiple providers like Boeing or international partners just to keep missions running. 
That money can go toward new exploration programs, moon missions, Mars projects, you name it. And with over 20 successful ISS missions under its belt, Dragon is battle-tested. Its launch escape system can pull astronauts to safety if something goes wrong during liftoff, and those ocean landings with parachutes, smooth and proven. It's no wonder NASA trusts Dragon more than ever. But here's where it gets complicated. This level of dependency can be a double-edged sword. SpaceX is already juggling an enormous workload, launching Starlink satellites by the hundreds testing Starship, and now potentially shouldering all ISS logistics. That's a lot, even for them. If the company gets stretched too thin, it might mean higher prices delays or fewer rockets available for other missions. And with Russia's involvement in the ISS, possibly shrinking due to economic strain and the war in Ukraine, that pressure on SpaceX is only going to grow. Meanwhile, the ISS itself needs regular reboosts to stay in orbit. Traditionally, Russia's progress ships handled that. SpaceX can do it too. They've successfully boosted the ISS before using Cargo Dragon, but it burns more fuel and adds cost. This situation is like a team project where one person, Russia, can't do their part, so the other team, SpaceX, has to pick up the slack. It might work out, but it could get stressful and expensive. Space fans are watching to see if SpaceX can handle it or if the ISS plans will change. Does that make sense? Let me know. This incident also raises serious questions about the state of Russian technology. The Soyuz launch pad failure isn't just a random accident. It's a glaring sign of flaws in operational procedures and quality control. The 20-ton service platform is essential for preparing the engines before launch. Yet it was left unsecured and destroyed a mistake that points to serious gaps in final inspections and safety protocols. Some people couldn't resist sarcastically commenting that QA based on vodka is working. To put it in perspective, the magnitude of this error has been compared tongue-in-cheek to everyday forgetfulness, like leaving your car out of park and walking away. But the implications go beyond just one launch. Public discussion suggests that these quality issues may be systemic. Experts are asking whether this decline in quality spans all Russian aerospace projects, including strategic missile programs. One pointed comment notes that a recent failed test of the Sarmat ICBM destroyed its test launch facility. This isn't an isolated incident. Key Russian launch sites have been accidentally destroyed before suggesting deeper operational and quality problems.